we are not going to get to ending the HIV epidemic in 2030. That That is not going to happen. Uh, that's why it's important for you to get out to vote and make sure we keep the HIV funding so we can find a cure. Not by 2030. It's not going to happen. Maybe by 2040. Maybe by 2040. Maybe. Hey everyone, Raif Darazi here, and recently I had the privilege of sitting down with our special guest, Tony Newman, to talk about the state of HIV in the US, why we're not going to get to ending the HIV epidemic by 2030 here in the US, the communities currently impacted the most by HIV, and also take some time to get to understand the trans experience, her own transition, and how HIV continues to disproportionately impact the trans community. Now, I do want to point out that my mic was unfortunately off during our interview, so all of my audio is coming through her mic, and I had to play with the levels a bit in order to salvage the audio, but I'm confident you'll be able to hear me and still get the drift of what I'm saying. First, a little biography. Tony Newman is the director of the Coalition for Justice and Equality Across Movements, and acting director for the Center to End the Epidemics at NMAC, which stands for National Minority AIDS Council in Washington, DC. She was previously the interim CEO of the Black AIDS Institute, interim president of the Lyric Youth Foundation, and executive director of St. James Infirmary. Tony is a faculty member at the Transgender Strategy Center and the chair of the board of directors Managing Director for Trans Can Work. She serves as the membership chair of the California Black Leadership Council. Tony was the interim director of employment services at the San Francisco LGBT Center and director of development for Maytree AIDS Hospital. She previously served as the interim director of development and communications at to help everyone health and wellness centers and as a strategic fundraiser, volunteer recruiter, and legislative aide for Equality California. Tony graduated from Wake Forest University and is a candidate for her Juris Doctorate. Additionally, Tony is a best-selling author noted for her memoir, I Rise, The Transformation of Tony Newman. Wait, show that again. <laughs> Love it. This is the first time I've seen it. Okay. Gorgeous. Thanks for bringing that. I can read it every day. <laughs> it's not like a surprise. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm very good on a, on a Thursday. On a very hot yeah. Los Angeles day. West Hollywood. Ooh. Happy Pride, everybody. <laughs> okay, I'll start with a general question that I ask all my sure. guests, which is, what is your perspective of the global HIV AIDS epidemic? I'm excited to say I'm going to the International AIDS Conference in Munich uh, in July for the Trans AIDS Conference and the main conference. It's within the conference? There's a... Two days before, um, gate. Um, which is a trans organization led by Erica Constanellos, is having a trans conference on the 20th and 21st in Munich. And then I joined the main conference with my colleagues, Harold, Damian, and Moises from the 22nd through the 26th. I would say we're not going to get to ending the HIV epidemic in 2030. That, that is not going to happen. Um, uh, it's just been recently reported by the CDC that Latin men uh, are superseding black men and any other men with catching and getting the HIV virus. So, um, Latin men have the highest rate. Now. It, uh, Latin men have the highest rate over black men oh, wow. who have the highest rate over Latin men. Um, that's a report we just got back from the CDC that Latin men mm. are leading it. Women of color are still high numbers. Trans women of color still high numbers. And until these numbers go down, it's still an epidemic. Yeah. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor uh, and I don't have HIV, even though I've been working in HIV for over a decade and a half. But that's where we are from the activist uh, side of it, of trying to push things along. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do. And so currently you're the director of NMAX. Coalition for Justice and Equality Across Movements. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about NMAC and your role there? Uh, NMAC produces two conferences a year, uh, the Biomedical Summit, which is research. Uh, this is what some of the data I'm getting comes from. Is community um, invited to that as well? Community's invited. I have workshops for community uh, from trans um, and other orgs. Um, and uh, we run the biggest AIDS conference in America, which is the USCHA. Uh, which is not 15,000 like the International Conference in Munich, but it's uh, in D.C. we had well over 4,000 people uh, for the Black Women Love Letter. So we're expecting a little bit over 3,000 this September 
in New Orleans, and uh, that's what the center does, is escalate talking about stigma, how do we improve education and awareness. Um, the coalition is really fighting for uh, equity for race, sex, and gender. I team up with the NAACP, uh, GLAD, HRC, Planned Parenthood, Equal Rights Amendment, women, seniors, LGBTQ, youth, and trans, organizations get together and how do we collaborate and push one another. So that's the NMAC uh, and also in my division runs Next Gen, which is a youth mm -hmm. leadership. And I run the Glowing Leadership Opportunities for Women uh, as well. So um, I have uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four departments, one, two, three, four, five departments and 10 staff um, with tons of consultants out training people through Hersha grants on stigma, because who would think in 2024 there's still stigma? Yeah. And I mean, you know, Magic Johnson, 1995, all these people have had it and living with it, yeah. and there's still stigma. And I mean, Magic Johnson's on yacht, so obviously there's no stigma with him. Uh, but you know, that, I don't understand why there's still stigma, and he's been living with it for what, 24, like 30 years? Yeah. And he's living comfortably and healthy. Well, and now I'm even seeing thing? a resurgence of AIDS denialism. Yeah. And it doesn't even exist. Well, they say, oh, I talk to people, oh, isn't AIDS cured? Yeah, yeah, that, that too. Is, don't you have a cure? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, there's been no cure. There are drugs you can take to help you live 50 years, 30 years. I know people have had it for 40 years. I work with a guy at my tree's had it for over 40 years runs, exercises. So it's not a drug that's killing people, but it's still a, 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 a disease and we don't have a cure. Right. Um, and I think until we have a cure, we won't have the end of the HIV epidemic. Not one that's accessible at least. To I agree. People. I agree 100%. You have a few cured men, but... And I, I don't know how that happened. Awesome. I've read about these guys who are like, I don't have it anymore. I met one yeah. and he says, I'm cured. And I'm like, well, I have to take your word for it. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know if you have it or not. So, but he says he's cured and I was on this panel and he says, I'm cured. I am no way going to deny that. Um, but he says he's been cured. That was years ago. So, yeah. I'm, you know, I wondered if he's been cured, why can't we do what was done to him, which I didn't understand what was done to him. To others. From my understanding is they have cancer. Yeah. And they're pretty much dying of cancer. It's their last hope mm. is to get a bone marrow transplant. Okay. And the bone marrow has an, a natural resistance to HIV. Okay. But in order to transplant it, you have to suppress someone's immune, immune system okay. so that their body doesn't reject it. So it's highly risky. People have died from it. So it's not something that you can just do with anybody. It's, okay. it's kind of like a last option if you have cancer too. But that's not a cure though. That's, that's not a cure. So let's be clear. And I told him, whatever's happened to you, I believe I'm a spiritualist. I believe in a higher being. I don't doubt something wonderful could happen, but uh, that is not a cure. That is something that happened to them and it worked and kudos to them. Absolutely. But that's not a cure because if people have died from it, then it's not something most people can do. Or probably afford. That's probably very expensive too. So tell me, I know you're not living with HIV personally, but so mm -hmm. how did you get involved in being so active in HIV advocacy? I came out as a trans woman 34 years ago. Um, was working, came out, realized nobody liked what I was doing. The gay male group I had associated with uh, didn't approve of me transitioning from male uh, as I was born in North Carolina, Southern. Uh, mm -hmm. Gay male was always known as a gay male. But when I went from gay male to transgender woman of color and started doing surgeries and things to my body, I lost my family. I lost my gay male cohort of wonderful, uh, really positive gay men who I was a part of. Did that surprise you? Uh, Family, no. My family's always been religious, mm -hmm. Southern Baptist. But the five gay men that I was associated with, it shocked the hell out of me. Mm. I didn't understand. I'm still the same. We can still, I can still pay for dinner. <laughs> when is my turn? It's just my physical appearance had changed. Um, and back then, I had hair. I used to have braids like this uh, when I first came out. And a lot leaner. I wasn't as thick as I am these days. I was a very lean size four. Um, and they didn't 
they, they just didn't grow with that. And they came to me and like, you know, you are educated, you're bright, we value you. But back then, they considered it as a demotion, as something negative that I've done to myself, mm -hmm. that I was going to become a trans woman. They like, those people, and they said this, are, are pretty screwed up people. Is that like a drag queen? And I'm like, Do you, this is not nighttime. I'm not performing. Right. This is just who I am. Uh, we'll admit in the beginning, I did look a mess. They made very clear to me, you look awful. <laughs> you look really awful. Uh, but I just started, and I just yeah. started taking estrogen, and I didn't have breath and didn't have any surgeries. And uh, you know, I was wearing wigs, and I had to let my hair grow up. But it took a while, but I did formulate it. And, and you know, I, um, they did come back and say, oh, my God, you look really good. Uh, but... Uh, in the beginning, they thought it was negative. They thought I'd done something that was really going to, you're never going to be successful mm. in this genre as a trans woman. Who's a trans? I mean, there was nobody out. There was no pose. There's no role models. There was no role models. And, uh, you know, they're like, what are you? you? Are you like RuPaul? That tall, you know, work? Is that who you want? And then, I'm not a singer. I, I, no, I'm not a dancer. I'm an educator, and it just didn't work out that well. So they walked away. I found myself without friends, uh, got, lost my job, and ended up going to be a sex worker on 14th Street in Manhattan, New York, and met wonderful trans women on the street who at that time, uh, 60, 70% were HIV positive. Mm. First encounter in 1993 with HIV folk, uh, had my own stigma about it, but I was living, eating, and working with trans women of color who I was an academic, but who really taught me how to be a trans woman and had no money. How are you gonna survive out here? Um, and uh, Were you uh -huh. not able to hold a, a, another job? Is that I couldn't get another job. I had a degree from Wake Forest in graduate work. Uh, McDonald's wouldn't even hire me to, to sweep the floor. So that was really your only option? It was my only option. And I had applied maybe 100. I went back and looked maybe 135 times. And after that, I just realized, you know what? I'm broke. I'm hungry. I'm friendless. I'm going to be homeless shortly. Uh, I need money. Um, had never done anything like that in my life. Had never been around uh, substance abuse, HIV, people who had addictions, alcoholic, and drugs. All of that was new to me, um, and I had to learn how to survive. How did you deal with the emotional part of that? Um, most nights cried. Um, lived in Harlem in a little, what do you call it? Uh, a little cheap, cheap, I call them drug hotels. Uh, where most people who had addictions <laughs> were checking in and out. Uh, I lived in one of those for quite a period of time. And I felt abandoned, I felt lonely. But the Christianity that my mother and father had took me, I abandoned that. But I did find spirituality. Um, I do believe there's a higher being. And I sought out that higher being, like, I need help. I'm at the very bottom. I've been taught if you ask, if you do better, if you work harder, it can be better. And uh, believe it or not, it worked. I was a prostitute. Some people say whore. Um, then I became an escort and a mistress and traveling around the country with others and elevated that to by that time the internet kicked in. And I left the street. There was arrows.com and these sites that I could go on and and then people would come to me. Eros is a site where you could go and find, I think it's still active, male and female and transgender escorts mm. who are catering at your pleasure from mild to wild. <laughs> I think it's still active. Okay. Uh, it was like three fifty a month. It's very, I think it's like seven fifty a month now to get an ad out. You put an ad up on yourself. You check all the things you do. I don't do that. I, you know, I checked, I can be a police officer, I can be a nurse, I can be dominant, da da da. And uh, I imagine that's a little safer than. It, it was because, you know, you're getting in the cars, uh, you're going down dark alleys. Um, nothing major happened, but there was one or 
two times I felt like there's something wrong here. Mm. He is not a good guy. If we go where he says he wants to take me by the river, why are we going that far? We could stop here. I have my spots that I wanted to go to. No, I want to go over here. He had a set spot. And I would say uh, at that time, hey, wait one second and get out the car and leave. Mm. So, you know, the street was a little bit more dangerous. Uh, I didn't have that encounter as much in my home or traveling because it was a high rate. I was in nicer places, um, secure places, and they wouldn't really come into me to do that. Most of the, the clients I saw were really serious. So. so did you find a sense of community with the people that you were working with? I did. I did. And I'm still a sister uh, to uh, uh, one of the young ladies, uh, very close to her. Um, she lives in Chicago. Uh, but most of them died. So once I got back on my feet from being a prostitute, an escort and a mistress, I went to EQCA. I fought for the second round of marriage in California as a fundraiser because uh, we lost the first round. Once I left there, then I went to work for an, uh, an agency that did HIV and dedicated myself to all of the women, trans women that we lost, um, where they had no uh, prep uh, and pills you can take and injectables and Merck and Vave is coming out with new stuff and it's going to be injectable and a pill every three months and none of that was here. Um, so uh, I was lucky that I didn't get HIV to my years of escorting prostitution, but uh, I've dedicated myself to fighting for those that have died um, as if I was one of those women who, who uh, had caught it as well. Um, I just feel very blessed and lucky that uh, it didn't happen to me, but it could have. It, it, I was no special. Uh, I was just really cautious. Mm. I was extra safe because yeah. uh, I had that fear. I don't want it. So all of my activities during that time was... Were you just using... Because I don't believe that there was a whole lot of formal education around what was not. sex was. Mm -mm. So were you just kind of using your... Using, I saw the ads, you know, wear condoms. I had a pocketbook full of condoms. And had turned dates away who said, I want to go raw. And I would say, oh, no, I can't do that. Um, I'm clean. I would just test it yesterday. Um, they would show me a paper. And I'm like, you could, you could have whited out my name, put your name. <laughs> Let's not play that game. I said, I, you might think I'm stupid. <laughs> I do have a degree. You probably don't believe it because most of them didn't believe. Mm -hmm. I had went to a university like Wake Forest, mm -hmm. met Dr. Maya Angelou at Wake Forest, um, you know, had spoke to her, went, you know, went to graduate school, you know, people like, get out of here. Yeah. You're trash. You're a whore. You, you, you went to Wake Forest. Get it. That's a private school. Uh, and I just stopped saying it, but I, I, I let them know I'm not as stupid as you think I am. Mm. And I just use condoms. I don't know why I, I follow that precisely all the time, but I, I had condoms all the time and would not interact without them. And would walk away from quite a bit of money. Who said, I'll give you an extra $100. And I would say, mm, I'll pass. I'm broke, but uh, my life is very important to me. Uh, I just was very lucky that way. Very lucky that way. So lately in the news, I've seen a lot of articles related to um, HIV criminalization in the U.S. And then also the intersection of that with the trans community and specifically sex workers mm -hmm. in the South. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that a little bit? And when I was the ED of St. James, um, I had a lawyer, a wonderful lawyer named James Birch, and he and I worked with Mayor Breed in San Francisco uh, and the governor, Governor Newsom, um, um, in trying to get the CRIM uh, laws passed. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough bill. Um, uh, you know, pro prostitution, sex work will never go away. Uh, I walked away from it and went on and uh, I don't judge those that stay in. Uh, there's always going to be a need for sex for pay. You want A, I need B, we get together. It should, in my mind, be legalized and regulated, tested regularly, these women who are escorts, um, and regulate it and, and, and work with them. Because, it's, first of all, it's never going away. Never. I think prostitution goes back 
Somebody said 318 years. Some PhD from Howard said, I don't, I don't know. If it, he said, but it's been around here for hundreds of years. So as uh, uh, drag queens and transgenders. We, it's, it's not new. This has been around for years. Um, so um, I know they're still fighting for that. I believe in that. Uh, you know, uh, and over 64% of trans women of, of color uh, from a census uh, are sex workers. Um, and uh, mine was survival. Um, I, don't, I, I can only speak to what Tony was doing. I was a survival sex worker. That doesn't make it better or worse than someone who does it because that's what they want to do. They don't want to look for another job. They want to work for themselves. I'm not here to judge on that. Uh, I did it for survival. Uh, and then I did it smarter by getting on the Internet uh, and making a lot more money. Um, but I was a survival sex worker um, and then realized I do have tools that I can use to elevate myself. And then I began to use those tools years ago when I went to EQCA. They said, I do have a degree, and I am a person who used to be an assistant to the dean, and I can work. Uh, I have skills. I used to be a supervisor in the community college system in North Carolina, an assistant to the... So I, in my mind, I, I, I realized, go back again. Things are changing. Try again. And it worked. Uh, but if it had not worked, I, I could have probably still been a sex worker. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of them are doing it. That's how they make money. They don't have a job. They need a job. Um, and it is what it is. So we're not here to judge. Nope. Um, we're here to like, do what you need to do, but just be safe. Yeah. Just be safe. It's about empowering people. Yes. They have the knowledge, the education to, to choose their own path, but to do it safely and, and hopefully. And trans can work is, is what we do here in the Connie Norman Transgender Center. Yeah, tell us about the center. Owned by uh, AHF, AIDS Health Foundation. Mm -hmm. That's what we do here. We help TGNC folk get jobs. This is the only board I'm on, and the reason I'm on it is because everybody, every American needs a job to survive and thrive. So if you do want a job and you're in California, Trans can work. We're here to help you. Resumes, interviewing, tool building, because that's what I believe in. I want you to thrive. Um, and sometimes it's hard to thrive as a sex worker because the dates come and go. It's hot today. It could be cold for the next three days. It's not steady. There's no health insurance. You can't take vacations. So there's an option. If you want it, we're here to help you with jobs. And we're one of eight or nine organizations that are trans-led in this building uh, that Michael Weinstein um, from AIDS Health Foundation, uh, due to his good friend, Connie Norman, who he loved, he named it after her, and uh, trans can work is on the first floor, and the rest of the groups are on the, the second floor, so. Okay. Well, I'll put that information down in the comments or okay. in the description box below, if people wanna reach out. Okay. Uh, okay, so you mentioned get out the vote mm -hmm. this year for especially for the black and Latino mm -hmm. community? Uh, the Co Coalition for Justice, our theme this year is Get Out to Vote. Mm -hmm. We're working with HRC, and WCP, and others to get people of color uh, and youth. We start an eight college HBCU tour in September, starting with Howard, going all the way to North Carolina Central and AT&T, &T, down to Florida, down to Fisk, uh, going to New Orleans. We'll be going to uh, black colleges helping young people, uh, 501c3, I can't tell you who to vote for, but making sure that you are registered to vote, that every American is your right to go to the ballot. We think women of color and youth are the key to the 2024 November elections. That's a belief that me and the coalition partners have at NMAC, and we'll be the coalition team uh, myself and Destiny Pearson, my coordinator, will be traveling to these universities with our partners, hopefully with the NWCP, Southern Poverty Law Center, and others, to get people out and motivated to vote. It is your right as an American citizen, whether you like it, no one on the ballot. It is your right. Um, and if you don't vote, please don't complain about laws in 2025. Don't come to me and say, oh, da, da, da. If you didn't vote, you have no say-so. One vote can make the difference. So uh, we'll be getting out. Your vote matters.
please vote. And that's the, the theme of the coalition mm -hmm. uh, for 2024 to get out to vote. Okay. Okay, pivoting back to HIV, what do you think are some of the biggest hurdles for getting our communities of color educated, knowing about PrEP, access to PrEP, testing, all of that in order to really clamp down on the epidemic here in the U.S.? Getting families educated and getting churches. Um, I think the black church and the church in America, if the churches would take it on and educate themselves, um, I think it would be better um, if we got the churches involved. Mm. Um, you know, the black church I was raised in, being gay is a sin, being trans is a sin, drinking liquors is, I mean, you know, the church was so condemning. Mm. I think if we could get the black church involved, the Latin church, the Catholic church, to say this is a disease, gay or straight, I, I think we can make some progress. But we, we still need to do education. Uh, believe it or not, there's still stigma. And a lot of people think AIDS is cured. They think it's gone. Mm -hmm. They think, well, I don't have it. You don't have it. I don't know nobody who got it. Well, I go to the club all the time. I, I'm like, they may have it. They may not tell you. Mm -hmm. They may have it and not know. A lot of people don't get tested regularly. So if you're not going to use PrEP, you're sexually active, you're not going to use PrEP so that you can have as many partners as you like. I'm sex positive. Enjoy sex. Sex is meant to be fun. But be safe. Um, that's where we are. And a lot of people are still not practicing yeah. condoms or PrEP, yeah. which I don't understand. If I, I'm not, I'm, I've been married 20 years. I'm not active outside my home. But if I was going to have three or four partners, I would use PrEP, even though there's been some controversy with PrEP and trans women who are on estrogen or testosterone. And they're working through that. There's been some issues. They're concerned about... It, you know, how, how does it work if you are taking estrogen? Estrogen is what a male would take to become a female. And testosterone is what a female would take to become a male. Um, there's been some interaction that it doesn't work well if you're on your uh, transition drugs. Okay. But if you have PrEP and it's 98% effective, why not use it? And the people of color community are not using it. The white community is using it and doing quite well. And I say that with love. I love everybody. But why is it that people of color are not using PrEP? If you're going to have three or four partners, and absolutely have three or four partners, uh, use PrEP to help you. I'm also hearing that um, cisgendered black women are, are now beginning to go to their healthcare providers and say, I'd like to be on PrEP. Yeah. And they're saying, you're not an at-risk community. Yeah. We don't yeah, yeah. feel the need to give it to you. Yeah. But if you listen, uh, uh, I think Dr. Dimitri from the CDC, uh, love him. If you're going to have lots of sex, you should take prep. Yeah. If you're going to be active, if you own bootycall.com, lover for the night, whatever, whatever your site is, <laughs> Hey, call them in, bring them over, get on something. And people don't want to use condoms. I used to use condoms. That's all I knew. I'm old. But there's prep now and things that you can do to really protect yourself so that you have a lower percentage of getting HIV. It is preventable. It's no cure, but it is preventable. Mm -hmm. That I, I, I would die upon that word. Sure. It's not curable, but we can prevent the rest of America, which I think there's 1.4 or 5 million in America have HIV. Uh, I think we, we could prevent it if most of us who are sexually active would just get on PrEP uh, and take PrEP. We could end transmission today. We could end the transmission and work on the cure yeah. of the 1.6 million to try to end the epidemic. But we could stop them from getting it. I don't understand why the numbers are going up again when there's PrEP. I recommend everyone take PrEP. I, 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 uh, I know people who are on it who live by it. Um, and they're very active, trust me, and they have not gotten HIV. So I can only speak to the three or four people I know on it. I'm not on it, let me be clear, but I know people who I, I'm good friends with who don't have HIV and very active on the websites. <laughs> and now I see that uh, DoxyPep 
is now being, um, has been officially encouraged for, I think it's just men at this point. It's always men first, and they still have to well, do studies yeah. on women. Yeah. And, and okay. the body's different. Yeah. The man is a testosterone body, and the female is an estrogen body. Um, I have both, low testosterone now, but higher estrogen. But it's difficult, and they say they always start with the testosterone, which is a difficult body, and then the estrogen body, because it's, in my opinion, it's much easier for the trans men to take testosterone um, and move forward than the trans women who take estrogen. Estrogen takes a uh, while to kick in. Uh, the testosterone works very good, so it's the stronger of the two, I believe, from what I've heard. So they go to that first and then they go to women. But please, doxy prep. Is for gonorrhea, chlamydia? That's correct. That is correct. Which it's been shown that if you have other STIs, that that can increase the risk of HIV transmission as well. That is correct. That is correct. I know someone who had gonorrhea um, and then ended up catching HIV. Um, and when they got gonorrhea six months later, they got HIV. I, I don't know the particulars, but I understand if you get an STD, gonorrhea, syphilis, and others, it opens the gate, from my understanding from a doctor, mm -hmm. of HIV. Your system is open to it. Uh, I got that from a doctor, so don't quote me on that. <laughs> He's a doctor, so don't yeah. quote me on that. Just don't write him and say, that was unfactual. I'm quoting someone else. I'm, I don't know if it's factual or not. So I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I like to be factual when I speak. Do you have any, because I'm starting to get more healthcare providers, more uh, scientists, researchers, investigators watching as well. Do you have any advice for when these investigators are creating a new study? Um, they want to roll out, or pharmaceutical companies want to roll out a new drug to be able to create that trust and connection with the community so that we're not just pushing drugs out and, and our community is like, whoa, what is this? You know, what is, what is PrEP? I don't you know mm -hmm. if I trust that or what is this mm -hmm. new HIV medication? Mm -hmm. How about have trans women at the table? How about have black women, Latin women, Asian women at the table? You know, the research has mainly been done at the pleasure for gay white men. Yes. It is what it is. Um, I think if we need to bring these other groups, make sure they're in the testing, pay them well, make sure that they're in the research, make sure the researchers are people of color um, and speaking different languages, I think English and Spanish, so that they can take it back to the Spanish community. I think we need to bring more people of color to the table and hire more doctors who look like us. Black, Asian, uh, Latin, doctors who speak and come from the communities that are the most highest represented. I think that's how we interact with each other, by having people that look like me and you at the table, both in the research capacities, the MDs and the researchers, mm -hmm. all the way to the people who are testing, to make sure everyone is at the table. Black women, Latin women, trans women of color. These are the highest numbers. Latin men, black men. You gotta get them to the table. Um, and if you're doing research, make sure that they're compensated well uh, for their time. And make sure you have a couple of black, Latin and Asian doctors where they can see themselves. Uh, we tend to navigate to people who look like us, I, you know, who give us medical advice, a little bit more trusting, when I talk to a black doctor, black woman doctor, then a white doctor. My doctor's Asian, by the way, so I love him. So if he watches this, I still love you. But, you know, I think having people like us. Mm -hmm. um, Someone who just understands your experience. Who's been where I've been. Yeah, exactly. You know, That's been in the Southern Baptist Church and knows Jesus reigns and you're going to hell. And if, if you, man, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. You know, that's a big thing in the black church. They quote it all the time. You know, didn't create Adam and, and Steve. He created Adam and Eve. And God. So uh, God is love. Uh, whoever you love, you, you're still good. Uh, and I want to add for studies, if a woman has a child or is pregnant, then she sh they should also fund her child care for when she comes into the study and yeah. not just say, we're not going to right. allow women to be involved, enrolled. Because, I mean, these companies like Bee, Merck, and Gilead, have you seen their financial reports? They're making, as my friends say, mucho dinero. <laughs> that means lots of money for you non-Spanish speakers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
mucho dinero. Uh, bring us to the table in the research. Hire researchers that look like us. Uh, you know, have people on the team that look like us and make sure the people who are doing, getting the research are well paid and look like us. That's how you stop and get the problem solved. Not with an all white um, facility and doctors and recipients, but a mixed group from the top to the bottom. Not just people testing, but the researchers are of color, mm -hmm. Spanish speaking. Mm -hmm. That's how we get to where we need to go. That's how we're going to get there. And do you have any words of wisdom for the community? Go to a doctor that you feel comfortable with and get tested regularly if you're sexually active. If you are sexually active, make sure you take doxy or prep. My thing is, we're here to work together. And if we work together and not against each other, I think we can get better results. And funders, the money in HIV funding has gone down quite a bit. It's not over. If you're a funder, let's get it back up. We can't expect Gilead, Merck, and Vive, and Gilead does a lot. They fund all these gallows, they fund prize, they fund black prize and Latin prize and trans prize. Mm -hmm. We need other funders to come to the table to uh, help us find a cure. And it, it still needs money, uh, and we still need the House and the Senate to approve the $700 million that we give to all these nonprofits. This is what we need. Uh, that's why it's important for you to get out to vote, to make sure we keep the HIV funding so we can find a cure, not by 2030. It's not going to happen. Maybe by 2040. Maybe by 2040. Maybe. I'll be retired by then. <laughs> so if it, you want to come up and, and learn and be an activist, call me. I'm glad to help to bring up youth who want to work in this field because I'm on my way out. Paul Kawada, the ED of NMAC, mm -hmm. is on his way out. Mm. Uh, so it's now for others who want to help this fight. We still need you um, and money to end the HIV virus. It's not, there's no cure on it yet. It's preventable, but it's not cured. So until there's a cure, it's still an epidemic. What does Tony do when she is kicking off her shoes at the end of the day, done working with all these numerous organizations, and you take some time to yourself to recharge? Tony loves to, uh, I walk in Runyon Canyon Park a lot. Uh, I am, a, I love to do yoga and meditation. I love to go to Vegas. I'll be going to Vegas in July. Love Vegas. Catch a show, go to a mentalist, let him read my mind. It freaks me out. <laughs> hey, you! I'm like, oh, that's good. <laughs> So, You're exactly who they're waiting to walk by. <laughs> he's like, ooh. And my, and my husband's like, what? Ooh. Da -da -da -da. You know, I love how they, this, you know, they look at you. And they hit, he hit on some really good points. Like, you used to be an educator. I, I was. How'd you know that? You know, mm. maybe look through the list, look at the rows. I've been and figured it out now how they might do it mm. and do Google. But just doing fun stuff. Uh, going to uh, casinos, I love to gamble, $500 or less. Uh, I'm going this Saturday to San Diego. A bet or total? Total is it. <laughs> Me and my partner only take 500 I go for the, the blackjack, $20 a table. Mm. And then once I do my 250 he does his 250 we've lost. We hit that buffet, and then we move on. So we, are, we have a 250 limit. Yeah. And if we won and I've got 800, I put that 250 away. I take that extra winnings. I keep mm -hmm. it going. Can stay there for a long time. Now, when I lose the 650, I still got the 250. I can go back again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <That's laughs> so he, it's a cycle. That's 250 right. went to 450, put the 250 at yeah. 200. It, you, know, it, 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 you know, I'm making them rich. But I, you know, I want some money, and it's just so You're fulfilling. Like, like 19, 19, 19, 20. Oh, you won, you won. It's just so exciting. It makes me feel so great. I always say uh, it's like an arcade for adults. You don't, it, 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 you don't go to walk away with money. No, you go, yeah, and your adrenaline is running. You're not thinking about, oh, the work, this, this needs to get done, that needs. You just think about, I need 21, bitch. <laughs> I need 21. I need 18. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I need it. <laughs> so I'll be there this Saturday night in San Diego at the casino. If you're in San Diego, you might see me. Love it. Uh, but yeah. Is there anything we haven't discussed today that you'd like to talk about? Uh, you covered it well. I want to say thank you. Uh, I, I take it as an opportunity uh, and a pleasure 
to do interviews. My goal is always to educate, enlighten uh, about trans folk. Mm -hmm. We're just regular people trying to survive. We're not evil uh, about HIV. It's a disease. It's not spreading and walking through the corridors of, of the heights. I just want to let everybody know these are just parts of life, trans, getting a disease, and how do you work through that? You get cancer, you deal with it. You get HIV, you have to learn how to deal with that as well. Mm -hmm. It's just a part of life. It's just another disease that we're trying to find a cure. So keep that in mind. You know, we all have biases, we all have prejudices, but just keep in mind, HIV is just a disease. We're looking for a cure. So help us. Don't knock us. Don't hate us. Let's get a cure. And then it's not a problem for nobody. That's right. It's over. Yeah. Where can people go to uh, follow you and or your work? Um, you can uh, find my book. It's Pride. So buy my book. It's a, it's, it is 12 years old. Uh, TonyDNewman.com. Um, it's my website, Tony with an I. Uh, if you're looking for more information on the Get Out to Vote, uh, you can go to nmac.org. It's on the front page. Look under the Coalition for Justice and Equality. And if you're looking for a job, we're in the Connie Norman Center. I'm here for Trans Can Work. We're helping TGNC folk get jobs to survive and thrive. Is that just for locals here in LA? Well, we are California funded and based through California DPH. Um, through Amityville Foundation, through the James Irvine. Most of our work is in Southern California. We are branching out to Northern. Uh, we have a partner now. So California, uh, and there's also a group in New York run by a lovely trans woman uh, who's working uh, similar in the East Coast. Uh, but nmac.org, transcanwork.org, tonydnewman.com. Find me, look me up. Uh, I'm open to any questions as long as you are polite. Well, thank you. Uh, if you're not polite, I won't get back. A little civility, please. Please. Mm -hmm. Ask anything, but be civil about it. Don't be foul. Yeah. Um, um, so. I'll I'm, have all those links that she just mentioned in the description box below for you all. I'm, I'm, I'm at all one of those three. Love all three people, Tony, and Mac, and Trans Can Work. Well, Tony, thank you so much for taking the time being vulnerable and open with me, sharing your story and your wisdom. It's very appreciated. Not a problem. Love you all. Everyone at home, please like this video, comment down below, um, shoot me your questions, shoot questions for Tony as well. Happy to follow up. Hit that bell, like this video, subscribe, and please share this with anyone might, who might find value in this content. Those are the best ways that you can support me and my content. Until next time, cheers. Oh